Welcome to Dynamic Coast Scotland's Coastal Change Assessment. This is a short video tutorial on how to use the web maps. You can visit the page at the website called dynamiccoast.com and you can get uh, information along a series of tabs across the top here. So there's information on the latest news, um, information about the project, um, uh, the methods and the team, uh, a page summarises the outputs and these each have links and separate reports that you can visit. Uh, there's information about the different map sets that are available. Um, again, videos and other three-dimensional models that some people might find interesting. And a series of presentations that are also available that we've made over the, the last few years. Again, if you click on the link, it'll pop up and there's more information there. Web maps tab we'll come back to in a second. Uh, a tab for the videos. Um, just like this one here, and also a link to other interesting um, pieces of information um, should you find them useful. We have a contacts page. If you'd like to get in touch with us, please click on the link. You'll also notice at the bottom of the page there's a series of icons. These are the different organisations that sit on our steering committee, and we're very grateful for their advice, and particularly the support the National Library of Scotland, in Scotland have given uh, providing us with an enormous amount of mapping data. So, um, we'll start at the home page then. Uh, to, to view the web maps, you can click on this button quite simply, or the tab up here, it takes you to the same place. There are two web maps and a video tutorial um, as well on, on how to use the maps, which is of course this video here. So, uh, you can click on the tab, see the web map, um, the standard web map will serve the vast majority of people fairly well. Um, the advanced web map has extra information for those who are particularly keen to get uh, specific additional information. So if you click on the web map, please read, consider and accept the limitations. And the, um, the page will adjust and load in uh, the map and the information uh, as well. There's a, an additional splash screen here welcoming you uh, and giving you some information. So the map shows three different shorelines, each from a different time period. So it shows the modern shoreline, the shoreline from the 1970s, which actually stretches from the 1970s to the 1990s, and a shoreline from the 1890s, which is the Ordnance Survey second edition mapping, which actually stretches or was surveyed between 1890 and 1920. There's change mapping, which I'll explain in a minute, which quantifies these changes. You can click on each of the lines and get extra information. There's other pages on how to use the maps and how to interpret them. Please um, have a look at the different links. So press OK and that window will go away and you're then left looking at what appears to be an air photograph of St Andrews with a series of lines on front of it. So basic navigation you can zoom in using the plus button and zoom out using the minus button. You can also zoom in by double clicking um, and rolling forward and backwards um, with your mouse. You can move the, the map to the left or the right uh, by clicking and dragging the map in different directions. And you can also zoom in to a specific area by clicking and dragging with the shift button. So if you press the shift button down, and then click and drag over an area, a red box will appear and you'll zoom into that red box. Again, you can pan around um, accordingly. So, three lines are shown in this area here. The black dotted line, if you click on it, it'll tell you that it's the 1890 shoreline. Um, the HWMOST stands for the high watermark of ordinary springs tides. This is a, an old-fashioned term uh, which is similar to um, mean high water springs. Basically, it's just different terminology. So that's the 1890 shoreline, actually surveyed here in 1893. The orange dotted shoreline here um, was surveyed in 1981. Um, and there's other information here as far as which cell we're in, which coastal cell. We'll come on to that in a moment. A third line is, a, is, a, is shaded in reds and yellows and, and greens, and that's a change line. We've actually got a, a legend 
available as well so you can see what the different lines are too. So if you click on that it'll tell you whatever lines you've got visible at that time. So this shows you that with this line, the change between 1970 to the modern data set, greens show accretion or gains, yellows show little or insignificant change, and reds show erosion or loss. So you can immediately tell from this area of St Andrews here that um, out head is growing towards the north. And If you click on that line then you can get additional information. So that tells you that between 1981 and 2013, the coastline advanced 94.7 metres. That is an annual rate of change of 3 metres per year. And the modern source data is a, something called a Phase 2 LIDAR, which may prove interesting to some people. Each little section of the line tells you a slightly different piece of information. So you can see when you click these distances all change. So there's a huge amount of information displayed on each of these lines. You can get rid of the legend by clicking the cross. You can also go here to the layer list and open that up and see what other layers are available. So the traffic light line that we've just been looking at, the red, the oranges and the, the greens, is shown here and you can turn it off or on by clicking the box accordingly. There's a similar change line from the 1890s to the 1970s, so again, if we want, we can turn that on. We can also, while that loads, you can see it's drawing on top of the 1970s line there. We can turn off the 1970s and pan around. Turn all the layers off, move to a different bit. Turn on the 1890s shoreline. the 1970s and the modern shoreline is shown in a pink dotted line. Again, these are all annotated with the dates accordingly. We also have two different layers at the top here called significant accretion. So if you're only interested in the bits of coast that have grown seawards, then you then you can tick on that and it'll show you the, the green bits. If you're only interested in the bits that have eroded, then you can see the, the red bits there as well. The term significant is important. It implies the fact that these are the areas where we're absolutely sure that the change that the maps suggest is real. It's wider than the width of the line. Insignificant change, where the change could actually be due to surveying error, um, is not shown within within these lines, but that are, those areas that are insignificant are the yellows in here. So the minus ten to ten meters are insignificant. So that's when we're not sure if it's real change or whether actually it's just surveying error. So you can turn on these different layers and zoom around the country and have a look at different bits and see what's happening. Um, you can also zoom in and the air photography comes on when you're at a certain level. Um, there's other information in here which is which is quite useful. So you have um, the presence of coastal defences highlighted by this red line here. We also have uh, a button that shows whether where your local authorities are and whether they have shoreline management plans. So again if we zoom out um, you can see that the areas shaded in green do have a shoreline management plan and areas shaded in red don't. So if you click on that again it'll pop up. You're within Angus Council. It's part of Coastal Cell 2. Again we'll come on to explain that in a minute. Does it have a local, uh, does the local authority have a shoreline management plan? Yes. Is there more information on it? Absolutely. So if you click on that link, you'll then get 
taken to a website that um, that has the the shoreline management plan on it. There are also um, some site summaries, and again, these little dots uh, turn on and off. So. Um, if you go in, you can see that here's one here for St Andrew's West Sands, cell 2, it's within Fife, it's site number 15, which we'll remember. And again, if we go to that tab, open in a new tab, that'll pop open. There's a series of reports, it said it was in cell 2, and what site number did it say? It was site 15. So if we go back, the report will open up. And this is a, a summary for cell 2. And if we go and have a look for site 15, then you'll see that West Sands is mentioned. And there's a summary of the historic changes at St Andrew's West Sands, showing the shoreline in 1890, 1970s, and the modern shoreline, with a description as well. So uh, each of these little dots around the country um, has a description of uh, the changes that have happened. So we've got 140 or so different reports uh, describing what's happened. There's other information as well uh, as far as the, um, the coastal type. So some people might find that interesting. Again, uh, it's symbolised quite clearly. Um, so we have hard, soft and artificial um, coloured in different colours. Uh, that's based on air photography interpretation. Um, it's, uh, it's probably the weakest data set we have. There wasn't a, a national data set before, so uh, we um, developed that ourselves and we're keen to identify where that uh, data set is uh, needing improvement. So um, if you think uh, we've got it wrong, then please let us know. Similarly, if you have any other comments or questions about the site, then please have a look at the additional information um, within the rest of the site. Um, we'll have a, an, a frequently asked questions and, and other guides uh, along these tabs at the top, so please have a look there. If there's any questions that are remaining, please get in touch uh, with the contact information here. Thank you very much.